Hey there, today we're talking about architectures for video analytics, where to run this workload. So let's dive right in. All right, so we want to talk about where to run analytics workloads because there are a range of possibilities with advantages and also disadvantages. So let's see when to use what. So in general, there are three different possibilities. First is camera or edge device. So it doesn't have to be a camera, but it could be an edge device very close to the camera where you can run analytics. Second is servers. So typically um, servers in, uh, in server rooms locally at the site. So it could be a small data center as well, or in the cloud itself, where you really have to upload the video and run analytics workloads in the cloud. So let's take a look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of those. And let's start off with camera or, or edge device. So obviously when you run it on the camera, you run it right there or the edge device right after the camera. One of the big advantages of this is that you can reuse the hardware that you might, might already have purchased for the camera itself. Lots of cameras have very powerful chips in them and where you can, can run analytics workloads on them. So you do not have to invest into additional server hardware, which is a great advantage, of course. Also, there is the theoretical possibility to, to reduce bandwidth by only sending video data when something is happening. But I have to say, in reality, I've never seen it before. It's always an argument that comes with edge-based analytics. But in, re in reality, you want to send the video anyway. You want to have a video recording. So bandwidth reduction is not really an advantage. But really, a hardware cost is. The big disadvantage of this is that you're fixed to this hardware. So if there is an upgrade or if there's a new analytics feature, it's not so easy to upgrade. Well, it's not possible to upgrade. So essentially you have to replace the device if you really need more powerful hardware. So you're a little bit less flexible. Plus you're of course limited by whatever hardware is there. So if it's not very powerful hardware, you cannot run a lot of analytics, of course. Um, yeah, and then of course the data is being streamed to the server. So you send a video stream and you send the metadata stream to the server where it's being stored. And when the client requests information, then this information is sent to the client application, either in the form of events, or more recently also in the form of uh, forensic search applications and forensic search data. So this is really the, uh, the, the camera and edge device case um, where you can save on server cost, you can save on complexity in the system, but a disadvantage is that you are less flexible in what you can deploy and how you can upgrade in the future. So let's take a look at the server case. Well, with the server case, obviously you take the camera and you just stream the regular video stream to the server where you run the analytics. Of course, if you do this, you need very powerful servers. So you need uh, GPUs in them, you need uh, multiple servers if you have many cameras. So that's really a significant cost factor there. But the big advantage is that you're more flexible. So if there's a new analytics feature in the future that you want to add, it's much easier to do. It's just much easier to just add a server centrally than really replace your edge devices out there. Um, plus it's camera independent. So you're not dependent on which camera is out there, if the camera supports it, if the camera doesn't support it, if this vendor supports this feature, if the other vendor supports the other feature. So you're camera independent, you're vendor independent. So it's more flexible, but more costly. And again, of course, you want to store the data on the server. And when the client requests the analytics metadata, for example, events or forensic data that is being streamed to the client. So nothing is stored on the client itself. It's really stored on the server. And finally, the cloud case where you stream the video direct to cloud. So it's a direct to cloud video connection. I have to say that it's very rare to really have a direct to cloud connection because it's very hard to do and it requires a very tight integration between the camera and uh, and the cloud uh, provider because you need to have proper protocols. You need to make sure that video data is not lost. But once you have it in the cloud, you run it in the cloud. You run the analytics in the cloud. And the big advantage of the cloud is really scalability. So if you want to expand what you want to do, suddenly it's very easy to scale up in the cloud and scale down again. So that makes it ideal for applications that do not run have to run all the time. So. Let's say you have a sports event and just for the sports event, you want to run analytics for that. The cloud is great. You just scale up during the event or for applications that don't have to run all the time. So for example, if you have a counting application that just runs at regular intervals or certain times of day for that, it's ideal. 
but you do not want to run analytics that really have to run all the time because it's very, very costly to run in the cloud. You of course want to store in the cloud as well. And then when the client requests, again, data is being provided right away. So th those are the three architectures. Um, and if we look at the history of video analytics, we started off with the server approach because it's the most flexible. That's where most of the applications were added back in the day. Then cameras became more powerful and we had the first tripwire applications on the camera. So a lot of the things were done on the edge, but pretty soon people found out that it wasn't very accurate. Also hard to configure, hard to deploy. So again, the applications went back to the server in recent years where you have very powerful analytics applications that are independent of the cameras and really run the powerful workload centrally with very powerful GPUs. And now you see the trend again where cameras become more powerful. You have super good analytics chips on there, deep learning chips. So a lot of workloads are running, uh, running there again and it goes back and forth. And today what you see mainly are really hybrid approaches where some, some workloads are being run on the camera or on an edge device. They're being sent to the server or the cloud where you do additional analysis, where you connect the data from different cameras and really leverage the advantages of each of these architectures to create one solution that really works well. So I would say today it's not one or the other, it's really the combination of all of those. So that's the overview over the analytics architectures. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe below and otherwise see you next time.